Hello friends, this is a short case about a neglected elbow fracture dislocation in which there was an associated capitulum fracture along with the medial dislocation of the elbow joint. There was no anteroposterior component. This was a pure medial dislocation of the elbow joint. So the patient had presented to us after four months of injury. The patient was primarily treated somewhere else as we see the previous signs of surgery in which there is some suture anchor placed over the lateral condyle. But the problem is that the contour of the capillum is missing. You see the capillum which should have been in this part is missing while the trochlea is there and the proximal ulna is actually articulating with the space between the medial epicondyle and the trochlea so that means it is medially dislocated and there is no anteroposterior translation that means again a pure medial dislocation of the elbow joint so for such cases we definitely need to know the detailed anatomy of the bone that we are going to handle so we are not sure what is the status of the capillum in this case what is the bone stock in the lateral part so we need a computed tomography or a ct scan so this is the axial cut of the ct scan we see this is the lower flare of the distal humerus it is getting more prominent downwards and we see some signs of callus formation are there there is some callus here now we have reached the olecranon fossa you see this is the posterior part of the olecranon it should have been articulating with the olecranon fossa here but it is not there it is actually translated on the medial side here also it is on the medial side now we are reaching towards the trochlea this is trochlea this is again the olecranon it is articulating with the with the medial margin of the trochlea and as we go more downwards we see whole of the olecranon is actually lying medial to the trochlea here we are seeing the olecranon and the proximal radius so the articulation between the olecranon or you can say the proximal ulna and the proximal radius is still intact that that means whole of the segment of the proximal ulna and proximal radius has dislocated towards the medial side but wait where is the capillum so you see we have seen the trochlea here here also but the but the capillum is missing there should have been a flare of the capillum here but it is not visualized that means it is either lost during the initial surgery or the fracture could have been an open one in which there would have been a bone loss or something has been mismanaged the capillum is definitely missing and probably because of lack of the bony component and probably lack of the part which should have been there for the insertion of the ligaments on the lateral side the instability persisted you see the ligaments attached on the lateral condyle the part of the lateral condyle is deficient here here also and here also it's kind of an excavation here you see so that means there is definitely loss of bone on the lateral side and probably the part which was attaching the ligaments has been compromised and in the coronal cut also you see the trochlea is still there but the lateral part is still missing here and here it is more clear you see there is excavation here that means there is loss of bone on the lateral side here also in the sagittal cuts we see that the proximal ulna is articulating with the medial epicondyle while the trochlea this part is the trochlea is not articulating with the proximal ulna it is empty here you see it is empty here also it is empty while the radial head is actually coming over the trochlea probably because of the medial subluxation and on the lateral side again we see there is no capillum this is the lateral condyle some this is the posterior part of the lateral condyle and the capillum should have been here here also it is missing but here and now here we have reached the trochlea so we are now sure that there is lack of bony component here and probably there is compromise of the lateral collateral ligament complex and there is medial dislocation of the elbow because the proximal ulna is going towards the medial epicondyle and the capitulum is definitely missing so what we need to do if we see the ligament as component definitely there is lack of lateral collateral ligament complex support here because of that deficiency there is lack of pull towards the lateral side which leads to the medial subluxation of proximal forearm and on the medial side probably the ligamentous structures have now shrinked or they have shortened that means they are now taut however intraoperatively the findings may differ but the likely chances are that these are tight structures that's why they are not allowing the ulna to relocate in its position 
and on in lateral view there is no anteroposterior instability that means the anterior and the posterior ligaments are doing their job as normal now what we did for all these situations the best approach is the posterior one because that provides a good visualization of the trochlea the medial epicondyle and the lateral condyle as well so this is the standard interval which we use there is some demarcation between the triceps and the anconius so we have gone through the interval between the triceps and anconius to expose the lateral side because this is our area of interest that is on the lateral side of the proximal ulna now what we had found there was deficiency of the lateral collateral ligament complex that means we were not able to visualize the lateral ligaments on this side or they were so much fibrosed or damaged that they were not amenable for reconstruction so what we did so a good ligament reconstruction graft is available directly under our vision we can take a central sling of triceps by splitting it longitudinally and generate this graft which can be used for reconstruction of the lateral ligaments also since it is getting attached to the proximal ulna or you can say the olecranon we need not to disturb its insertion because from there it will be getting its vascularity and by that we will be providing a good biological graft for lateral ligamentous reconstruction now now we have to address this dislocation first i've told you that probably the lateral side is lax but on the medial side we have taut structures so we have to supinate the forearm so that this space opens little bit after that we can sequentially release the tissue on the posterior side that means posterior to the olecranon here and also on the lateral side till the point there is some opening up of this space then after that we have to see whether the elbow is reducing or not so the space should open that much which can result in easy translation of this part towards the trochlea the moment you reach that point what you need to do you can just transfix the ulna towards the trochlea with a k wire and then see the position under c arm there should be a perfect reduction there should not be any abnormal opening up of this space like here you see there is symmetric joint space here so we have to target this kind of joint space whenever we are reducing the ulna suppose if there is tight joint space on the medial side that means the space is narrow here but wide here that means the medial structures are tight in that situation we will have to release the capsule from the medial side till the point it becomes lax enough so that the joint space remains symmetrical as we see here and we did the same after securing the ulnar nerve on the medial side we release the medial side close to the bone till the point we were able to reduce the ulna over the distal humerus and we ensure that the joint space remains symmetrical now you see we had to reconstruct the ligament also now the moment we were able to reach the symmetrical joint space we transfix the ulna to the distal humerus using a k fire temporarily then we use that sling of the triceps that we had generated as the graft for reconstruction of the lateral collateral ligament complex what we did we drilled a tunnel from the medial side towards the lateral side and that was sufficient enough for passage of the graft sling that we had generated so we passed the graft from the medial side towards the lateral side now this area is actually the supinator crest supinator crest is actually the insertion of the lateral ligamentous complex over the proximal ulna here from here we pulled the graft out maximally tensioned it and then placed a suture anchor close to the lateral aspect of the olecranon fossa now normally the ligamentous insertion lies over the lateral side but you see the lateral side is pathological there is no bony support here so it's better to create a new ligament which is close to the ulno humeral joint that means here that because we want the stability here not here because if we tore the ligament on the lateral side that will ultimately result in subluxation towards the lateral side so the new ligament has to be reconstructed over the ulno humeral joint on its lateral aspect that's why the suture anchor was placed close to the lateral border of the trochlea or you can say the olecranon fossa but in lateral view we had kept this suture anchor close to the central part of the distal humerus minor deviations from the isometric point can definitely occur 
but in these situations in neglected cases you need to ensure that the stability is not compromised minor deviations minor deviations in the placement of suture anchor can be well tolerated but the instability should not persist because ultimately there will be some changes in the ligament that we have reconstructed and the biomechanics of the elbow joint and the body will try to compensate for the forces that have been altered because of the creation of this new lateral collateral ligament now you see this part is the radial head this part is empty which was for the lateral condyle i've told you that part was missing and this new ligament is now lying close to the lateral part of the olecran or you can say the lateral part of the trochlea this part is the lateral margin of the olecran fossa so this graft was secured to the suture anchor in a maximally tensioned position and after tensioning we had performed the range of motion also that was found to be stable throughout and then we tried to give some stress on the medial and lateral side and we found that there was no opening on the medial side that means the medial ligament was actually taut it was not torn rather we had to release some part of this ligament close to the medial margin of the trochlea and the medial margin of the olecran or you can say sublime tubercle which is this prominence you see here this is the sublime tubercle and this was the post operative radiograph you see the bony component here is missing but the elbow joint or you can say the ulno humeral joint has been very well stabilized this is the ap view earlier the olecran was lying here now it is lying in a good position and in this lateral view you see our suture anchor is in a good position it is almost central in the lateral view and this tunnel we see one hole is on the medial side and one hole is on the lateral side and then the graft is secured to the suture anchor now the patient was encouraged for early range of motion exercises she was able to achieve 10 degree to 120 degree flexion of the elbow joint and at one year follow up you will be surprised to see the findings so this is one year follow up radiograph you see the articulation of the distal humerus and the proximal ulna is very well maintained and you see the site where we had reconstructed the new graft has been occupied by new bone this part is actually on the this part is actually on the lateral side corresponds to this part so the body has tried to adjust with the new ligament that we have reconstructed the new ligament inserts over here and the body is trying to cover the new ligament insertion with extra bone that means graft is now being treated by the body as the new ligament additional body support is actually providing more stability to the ligament while some motion has definitely been restricted but still the patient's functional outcome is definitely excellent the patient is able to do all her routine activities she is a housewife and she has been able to do all her routine activities the elbow flexion of around 110 degree is not compromising her day-to-day -day life and it's still better than the complicated position that we had seen on the initial presentation earlier there the patient was shown to different orthopedic surgeons but since the injury was a delayed one the argument was that the cartilage would have been degenerated with such a delayed presentation and there is no point of reconstruction at this stage she was advised for total joint replacement but at her age of around 22 years the joint replacement is probably not a good option so we had definitely taken a chance to reconstruct the joint and the cartilage was definitely not a good one but still the outcome of the patient is satisfactory that means even in neglected cases of elbow dislocation or elbow fracture dislocation you can definitely go for open reduction and internal fixation and start early range of motion exercises and that can definitely result in good outcomes in these patients so i hope this case presentation will be helpful for you in managing similar cases if you have any queries you can just put those in comments thank you